Last week, there was this enormous bombshell dropped by the government. Uh, they finally admitted there was 100% core melt in Unit 1, possibly in Units 2 and 3. All these reassuring, soothing words mean nothing. 100% core melt. What stopped the reactor accident in the time was the sudden influx of seawater. If they didn't put that seawater in at the right moment, we would have lost northern Japan. That's how close we came to a national worldwide tragedy. Okay, I just want to make sure people understand 100% core melt means what? It means that the core of uranium, which is 100 tons, uh, measuring about oh, 12 feet tall, is now basically a bowl of granola, uh, granola with cream on it. That's what I it like looks granola. like. Wait, wait, this, explain this to me. It melted down into it this mess. It melted mass. down and crumbled into this mess. There's right. nothing recognizable in the core. If you were to take a TV camera down there and photograph it, it's like a pile of splintered granola with cream. That's what it and, looks like. And so that whole time when people were saying, when some people were saying we have a meltdown and the government was saying, no, 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 no meltdown, it was a meltdown. It was a meltdown. 100% core melt. And what prevented the reactor from simply going out of control and exploding was the fact that they dumped seawater into the cores, stopping the accident. And this is not in any textbook. No right. textbook says, as a last-ditch measure, dump seawater to stop three simultaneous meltdowns. Okay, so it stopped the meltdown because the water simply absorbed the heat, heat and dissipated right. it. But the downside risk was the seawater then went back into the ocean and dissipated, and, and the radioactivity was spread The around. problem is you have all this salt, you have all this radioactive water, and the Chinese and the Koreans have protested because mm -hmm. of the fact that they were dumping radioactive seawater into the ocean. Radioactive levels began to soar. People were concerned about plant life, about seafood. It created a huge mess, and it's still going on. Realize that school children right now are going to be exposed to 20 times the level that an atomic worker is going to be exposed. This is so bad that one of the advisors of the prime minister quit. He quit in protest and said that I'm not going to let my children mm -hmm. be exposed to 20 times the radiation of what an atomic worker would Okay, get. I want to go back. What would have happened if the seawater had not gone in? Then you would have had a breach of containment. That is, all this melted uranium would have plunged onto the floor, probably caused a steam explosion, a hydrogen gas explosion, blew the lid off the whole thing, and then you would have had Chernobyl. Three simultaneous Chernobyls, raging cores with maybe 25% of the core vaporized and turning into dust particles, and basically wiping out northern Japan as an area that can be habited. So we came close. We came very close, right? Did they know this at the time? They didn't even know how close it was. There was an argument between the utility and the government. The government said, uh, hey, no, damn the torpedoes, right. put in seawater. And the utility said, no, 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 we can salvage it. We they were trying to preserve their it. investment. They were trying to preserve their investment. Even as there was a 100% core melt, they were saying it's salvageable. Don't put seawater in. Now, some people have said that what also hel helped preserve this was that the containment vessel itself was not breached in any significant way. Now Is that we right? realize that there's partial breachment of one, maybe two containment vessels. In other words, radiation is still coming out. And we have this mystery. Where is the radiation coming right. from? Right. It's coming from a breach of containment. It's leaking through cracks in the containment and melted holes. We now know there was a breach of containment. It did not create a steam explosion, thank God, because they put seawater in time. But radiation, the molten uranium, leaked out. Okay, now the next concern is typhoon season. What, what are the hazards? What are the risks we're facing now? Yes, we're entering typhoon season. And remember that we have three very damaged reactors that are still in free fall. The earliest estimate is now early next year they'll finally stabilize the three reactors. In terms of temperature, you mean? In terms of temperatures, go into cold shutdown. They can't right. go into cold shutdown now. So that means that well, there's a tipping point. Mm -hmm. A typhoon could tip it over, and the accident can start up all over again. So it's a ticking time bomb. It looks stable only because it's ticking away. However, a typhoon, a small earthquake, a pipe break, and the accident starts up all over again because of the damage, which is now known to be much more severe than we previously thought. So not, not to revisit, but at the time when many of us were covering Fukushima, and there were people out there saying, oh, you're making more of it than you deserve to, the fact of the matter is it was even worse than we thought it was. That's right. It was even worse than the worst imagination of the media. Media was speculating, oh, maybe 5%, 10% core melt. Right. No one ever suspected that we had three simultaneous core meltdowns, 100% core damage and that 
seawater, of all things, stop a tragedy from taking place. The media, if anything, we now realize, downplayed the real mm -hmm. impact of the accident. All right. Professor Kaku, thank you for all that good news. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says it has detected high levels of a radioactive substance that tends to accumulate in human bones. Tokyo Electric Power Company made the announcement after analyzing soil samples taken on May 9th at three locations about 500 meters from the number one and number two reactors. The utility detected up to 480 becquerels of radioactive strontium-90 per kilogram of soil. That's about 100 times higher than the maximum reading recorded in Fukushima Prefecture following atmospheric nuclear tests carried out by foreign countries during the Cold War era. This is the second time since April that strontium, radioactive strontium, has been found inside the plant compound. The substance was also detected in soil and plants more than 30 kilometers from the Fukushima nuclear power station in March. Tokyo Electric Power says it believes that radioactive strontium was released from the damaged plant and it will continue to monitor radiation levels. Next, take your colander or strainer. Your ramen should be finished by the time you have your sauce mixed. Go over to the sink and simply dump the ramens into the colander and shake it all about. About 1,800 people in the evacuation area near the Fukushima plant still remain in their homes, despite being given a deadline to leave by the end of Tuesday. The government had instructed about 10,000 residents living in five municipalities outside the original 20-kilometer no-entry zone to evacuate by the end of May. But officials in Itante Village say 1,427 people, or 23 percent of its population, have not yet moved out. They added that many residents in high radiation areas and families with babies and infants have already evacuated. Those remaining in the village include residents who have found nowhere else to go, as well as cattle farmers and self-employed people. When government says they are starting a new program under the guise of helping its citizens, it may sound well and good on the surface when presented positively by the mainstream media, but this government misallocation of money and resources always leads to unintended consequences. We need to listen to each resident's conditions and then comply with what they say, and we will complete the evacuation of the residents as soon as possible team from the International Atomic Energy Agency will submit a summary of its report to the Japanese government on Wednesday after concluding its investigation into the nuclear disaster in Fukushima. The 18-member team inspected the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant and other nuclear facilities beginning May 24th. The draft of the IAEA summary report says Japan took the best possible measures immediately after the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant but it had underestimated the potential danger of tsunami. The draft says Japan did its best under the circumstances with all safety systems lost and insufficient manpower and lighting. The federal government felt that this would both stimulate the economy as well as reduce the nation's long-term carbon emissions. Every vehicle qualifies. Going on now until the money runs out. It's cash for clunkers. The government talking points that the news media reported were full of cheerful results. But the draft also indicates that Japan had not considered the full impact of the tsunami and failed to respond effectively to waves that were higher than had been expected. The fact that four reactors were exposed to the risk of meltdowns is a major issue in the accident, and it calls on Japan to revise its current method of dealing with a severe nuclear accident. Previously, the procedures were based on the assumption that lighting and electricity would be available in such an accident. The team criticizes Japan for failing to ensure the independence of the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency. Three years ago, the IAEA advised that the agency should be separated from the Economy, Trade and Industry Ministry. The team will submit a full report to an IAEA ministerial meeting that will open on June 20th in Vienna. New dealerships saw sales spike 
the average trade-in saw a 61% increase in fuel efficiency, and the Cash for Clunkers program stimulated the economy. The unintended consequences that were not reported. The vast majority of trade-ins were paid off, but after the trade-in, the majority of new vehicles that were purchased were financed or leased. So Americans literally destroyed assets in order to exchange them for debt. The clunkers were destroyed, never reaching the full cycle of life of a vehicle. Instead of being purchased at an auction to be resold at a used dealership or purchased by a low-income individual, the vehicles were destroyed. The engines that have been disabled with the sodium silicate product are not able to be reused. In Hokkaido, northern Japan, police have begun searching the head office of the Hokkaido Railway Company for evidence connected with Friday's derailment accident. An express train derailed and caught fire in a tunnel on Friday. About 240 passengers escaped from the tunnel, with 39 of them suffering burns and other injuries. Police are confiscating documents, including records of operations and train maintenance, to help them discover the cause of the accident and to determine how the railway company responded to it. They've already discovered that the thrust shaft, the part that conveys power from a train's engine to its wheels, fell off before the derailment occurred. After smoke filled the train, the conductor told the command center that passengers needed to be evacuated. But the center reportedly told the conductor to keep passengers on the train as it had not confirmed the fire.